So to finish this one off, we were looking at the floor drain. Uh, so this is basically half of it here. I just haven't mirrored the other half. What are we looking at? This is slightly different to the product literature. So this is what we got from StormTech. And we see their drain here. What they've done in this instance, they have the timber joist, they've cut the compressed fiber cement sheeting, and then they've stuck more on underneath, and that's creating this rebated section, this recess that allows for the waterproofing to be recessed underneath, which is a good idea. So it makes it much harder for it to flow away, gets into the pipe a lot better, um, and it makes a, a continuous bedding for the, um, the mortar because we see that the bottom of this is actually not straight. It's on a bit of a angle. Let's grab that. Great. So that's effectively what's seen. Now, do we show a break? Do we show the pipe? I would suggest no. We don't show this pipe, at least not the way that they're showing it. Uh, the rule is when we're cutting sections through something, we never cut through an instance. So we never cut through a column or something like that. We cut through the consistent, the, the typical. So in this case, this would be our typical. So we'd see the pipe, but we'd only see the pipe in elevation. That was not very straight. Let's try that again. Hold shift. I want that to be 0 or 90. Let's use this one. All right. So, of course, let's make that a 100 mil pipe. So, effectively, we would see the pipe to this point, and then above that, we could make it dashed if we wanted to. We might use a very small dash. And that would basically be it. We could go into more detail to explain the, the flashing around here, how this works, that the waterproofing actually needs to go down into this. Uh, but that's, that's about it. Uh, we can see this in elevation. We shouldn't necessarily be seeing the pipe in section, which is sort of what they're doing. We're seeing this pipe in section, but we're also seeing this section here. The point is that this isn't continuous. This is only an instance, whereas this drain, a linear drain, is continuous. So that's effectively what we'd be seeing. Great. So we're going to leave that one now. Uh, there's enough there that hopefully that makes sense for what you can do. Move this to the side. We can come back to that one later. And we're going to turn on our trace reference again, <clears throat> and we're going to now do the threshold detail. So if I move all of this away, so I could either move the, the detail, which is a, sort of a bad approach, or we could drag the reference. So we're going to drag the reference across, holding shift to keep it straight. And the next detail that we need to do is where the floor connects to outside. The bathroom floor connects to outside. All right, so we can use the start of what we've already got. Uh, we could take, for instance, this part here and go, let's try that again, select, move, mirror a copy. It doesn't really matter where we place it. And what we want to do is to transition from compressed fiber cement through to hardwood timber floor. So let's go into the detail and see how that works. We need to have this brass or aluminium angle, and then we need to waterproof over that. Now we're saying here that this whole floor probably isn't waterproof anymore. This whole floor could now just be water resistant because uh, this is out of a shower area. Of course, you can always over detail, you can always create that all as a waterproof floor if you think that's going to be safer and create a better waterproof result. This could be a, a double joist. We might make this a double joist now just to keep this really simple. And effectively on the left hand side we'll have that as compressed fiber cement sheeting and on the right hand side we'll have this as timber. Let's just assume that the timber floor is 18 millimeters thick and the compressed 
sheeting is 20, sorry, is 19 millimeters thick. We're going to use a wood patch. And I'll change the orientation of that. And we'll change the color of that. Great, so we've started off, what are we missing? Uh, we need to get rid of some things still, so we need to get rid of all of this. We need to get rid of this. And we're probably actually going to get rid of, in this case, the waterproofing. Let's just copy the way they've got it, just so we're showing some variety. In the same way, we might be falling away from uh, the door, which is most likely we're falling away from the door. Let's slide this along so you can see what I'm doing slide that along and we have a door whether that door is sliding or hinged it doesn't really make much of a difference in this case we probably want the door to sit slightly above so we're going to have and we can see this here we've got it slightly off the ground but that's fine we're going to have our brass angle so I'll make that solid field how big do we want that to be we want that to be at least 30 millimeters and we'll make that three millimeters thick 33. But we can see that potentially it needs to be much higher, and that's all dependent on the fall, how far it needs to fall, where is it falling to. We don't necessarily know the answer to that question um, right now. Let's grab this same one. Let's just assume that the door is solid, and we're going to say that the door is. 42 mil. And we'll turn off that one. Sorry, let's do that one there. Great. Let's reduce this down so this is the same size as this. And we'll move this along so this stops just there use the split tool to get rid of all the excess that we don't want turn the trace ref reference off for a bit to make that easier to see and we'll go subtract a polygon to cut that there Right, now how would we finish it? We could have a, a grouted joint, and effectively we'll now move these along. This needs to sit at the end of here, and this will normally sit somewhere around here. Often uh, this will happen slightly outside of, it sort of depends on the wall thickness, but we could assume that it's somewhere in the vicinity of 120. Let's try that again. 120 millimeters thick. So the wall thickness could be this large. The, the door could be all the way out here. Or the door could maybe be a little bit further in. What sort of clearance do we want underneath the door? We align that here. We probably want at least five millimeters. <laughs> I'm not doing this very well. Move, drag. Let's take it a little bit slower. R, five, enter. That's better. And what are we missing? We need to show that there is waterproofing that happens here. So that means we want to take a bit of this stuff back again. And we want to waterproof this edge. Now, that's a little bit complicated, a bit cumbersome. So maybe for now, we just use the dashed line. How should this look? It should be running down the face. 
over the edge and then along the floor. Let's try that, see if that represents, yep. So that's our waterproofing of our threshold detail. Like that. In this case we don't want carpet, that's not what's happening. It's a timber floor. So we see very commonly in this type of detail that we have this step, a 30 mil step or a 31 millimeter step, which isn't desirable. What can we do about it? We'd have to set down the whole bathroom floor. This is an existing house, so that's not that easy. If this was a new house, that would be much easier to do. Uh, but generally speaking, this is going to be the result that we will expect that we're likely to have. Hopefully that helps. Uh, in the next video, we'll have a look at how to create wall junction details in a bathroom.